Hello, my name is Ryan Scouten, a senior architect with Zact out of Utah. I've been developing with SharePoint for 10 and a half years now, starting out as an ASP.NET developer and then being having SharePoint forced upon me as the part of the job. Say, like, okay, we're doing SharePoint, figure it out. It's like, uh, okay. So back then, being ASP.NET, SharePoint on ASP.NET works really well for me to be able to transition into. So I was like, okay, sweet. And since then, loved it ever since. So I spent quite a bit with the SharePoint framework, doing different presentations and working with it, trying on different projects where, for clients. So I've had a few months worth of experience with it, at least prayed with it with the uh, preview version when it came out. It does some pretty cool stuff. It kind of, my impression, it gets us a lot of what we have been used to developing with, with when it comes to SharePoint. So if we have, previously we had deploying code and adding functionality to SharePoint the same way Microsoft did. Over the years, that's kind of in the cloud, we didn't have that same option, but now we're getting to the modern interface. We have those same tools and the same methods of adding things into SharePoint, and we can do it all again. So we're kind of, instead of being the redhead stepchild, we're now back to not quite first class systems, but we're pretty close. I think the, my impression is that with the SharePoint framework, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. So they have a lot to do on their roadmap. A lot of things that we need to see as developers in order to make this a completely viable solution. So we have the client side web parts, they have the extensions that are in preview now that we can play with, which is a huge plus that we can work with it. Um, actually yesterday they released the tenant level web client side web parts so we can now, instead of having to deploy them and say, okay, got to add one of these to every single site I want to use it, I can say, okay, deploy a tenant level and then we can just add them. So that is, those are some big improvements that I think they've made. So long term, I think it's, the roadmap looks good, but I think there's still some areas where, I don't, honestly, I don't think Microsoft really knows where they're long term going to go. There's, okay, here's what we're working on now. And then beyond that is kind of based off of the feedback that we as a community provide to people. My favorite part of the SharePoint framework is in large part the new tooling. Because for the longest time, as a SharePoint developer, we were kind of behind when it came to development. So with the new tool sets, we're like, okay, we're using the same tools and I can go out and use the latest packages and the new things that we've got without having to say, okay, I'm kind of hacking this in. It's what the way we're supposed to develop. The thing I would add is the ability to do more branding. As a lot of times the requests I get from clients, I need to make this look like my company. I mean, they want their own personal identity. So without the branding, a lot of the companies are like, well, we'll just stick with the classic view and when Microsoft gets there, we'll release it. So I think that's one of the things I really wish they'd get in and preferably sooner than later. One thing I know is just the issue is just the deployment me me mechanisms. The issue I ran into with trying to do web parts for both our internal company and for clients has been the issue with trying to templatize. So if I need to make a template out of a, a site and deploy the web part, it wasn't really an option. So now with the tenant level deployments, we're getting closer there. I still now that they released it yesterday, I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, but that's one of those things that kind of gets us closer to being able to do that. So I think the, the biggest challenge is, is one, getting started as a developer. A lot of us are used to, okay, we're just gonna plug things in, we're kind of hacking in with a content editor. So it's kind of changing mindsets a bit. Plus, a lot of, there's a lot of new tooling. It's one of the things I liked about it, but there's a lot of new tools that's kind of changed. If you're going from a server-side developer, there's a huge change, because previously we had Visual Studio, we had the full Microsoft tool chain. Now, with the SharePoint framework, it's a bunch of different pieces that you kind of have to kind of, that are put together, and the framework is really good about combining all those, so we don't have to try and figure out on our own. But it is one of those things you have to learn a different tool set to be able to work with. So that's one of the biggest issues for developers. I've also seen with clients trying to get in there and use it, just understanding what it is. Because a lot of times, okay, Microsoft announces as part of the virtual summit and the future event, they're like, okay, here's the SharePoint framework. But the client's like, okay, well, we've got it. Now, what is it? How, how does this benefit me? Why do I want to do this? So I think a lot of times helping the people and customers and people in general understand, okay, this is what the SharePoint gets you and why you want to start doing it and how it can benefit your business. I think going into the future, the SharePoint framework is going to become the way we do SharePoint development, which it's already getting that to that point. Once they get a lot of these features in here, so in the next few months, I know they're 
probably going to end up releasing the SharePoint framework extensions, which will be some good stuff. That'll be short term. Long term, they get into the branding and a lot of the deployment pieces that we're used to when we're doing our current solutions. Is if we can get those pieces in there and get that in, I think they're going to kind of come with those with the next in the future, saying, "Hey, we've got these now stuff. We have a fully robust tool that you can use." And then I think once we get to that point, adoption across developers will will skyrocket. Plus, once we get the on-premise stuff. I know I talked to a lot of developers in sessions. They're saying, hey, oh, this is some cool stuff, but uh, I can't use it yet because they're, they're stuck on-prem. So like, okay, loved your session, loved what we're talking about, but yeah, I can't do much with it at the moment. My advice would be for, primarily first for developers, is you need to get familiar and comfortable with client-side development. I know there are a lot of developers over the years that have gotten really comfortable server-side code, but we need to kind of change our mindsets. We need to start working on JavaScript and getting used to TypeScript and all these other tools that are out there to be able to help us do the client-side development that we need. And you'll have to be doing those if you're gonna do the SharePoint framework. Because you can't do C Sharp in the SharePoint framework. It's just not gonna happen. So developers need to get up to, up to date on the modern tools. So Node.js, TypeScript, JavaScript, all the tooling, the goal, the automation pieces we got with this, because these are gonna be things that make your life easier as a SharePoint developer. For customers, for the most part, they need to get comfortable with the modern framework, because a lot of what we're gonna be producing in the SharePoint framework is going to augment what we're producing there. So it helps make things a lot easier.